Is it too soon to say that Dame Trade may have killed two contenders and created a monster third? Let's just start there. <laughs> he doesn't go to Miami. They're one and four. He goes to Milwaukee. They can't guard anybody. And then it leads to a sequence of events where Drew Holiday goes to the Celtics and they're averaging 180 points a game. Kyle, man, too soon to worry about this trade from the Bucks miami sides? Oh, there are, a lot of, there are a lot of variables hanging in the air. As fun as it would be to just shovel dirt, uh, as fun as it is to shovel dirt uh, and jump to that conclusion. I mean, it, the, bi- the big thing here is Middleton. Middleton is on a minutes restriction right now. If you watch them, I mean, they can't guard the ball at all. If you read, Buck's Twitter has been really fun to watch, not in like the schadenfreude way, but I mean, th- they're mad. A lot of their smartest fans are mad. And I think rightfully so. The things that we saw on the horizon, they kind of sold their soul a little bit for uh, a to please Giannis in the in the we can talk about the Adrian Griffin hiring here in a second, um, but you know B you know the offense you know the offensive side they it, in the NBA is a plus minus game they were heavy on the minus they were heavy on the half court stifle you but they couldn't score they get to the end of the year and they tried to solve that problem by you know switching out the coach people complained about Budenholzer for years. I really thought that they should have hired Nick Nurse because I thought, you know, if you're going to, why not do the Frank Abagnale with the FBI thing and go get the guy who knows who's been terrorizing us? Like, let's go get the guy who has the biggest Giannis counter book, like, in the world. Let's hire that guy. Um, But I I do, to to put some, like, let's, my brake pump thing would be, Middleton is going to be huge for their offense to open up. You're going to be able to run more three-man options. He's their best and most qualified ball handler and creator and pull-up shooter. Um, the question would be, is he going to get back to that spot? Is he going to get back to where he can do that? You know, And that still doesn't solve their issue of guarding the ball because if you compare them to the Celtics, um, you know, it's just there's a huge chasm between those two teams and like pressuring the ball. Uh, so I would say they've been shocked they're not electrocuted. They're not dead. So I, I'd say it's a little soon to say, but they still have some some real, really big issues defensively to answer, in my opinion. Yeah, I would go ascending order house, things that I've noticed. I've watched three of the Bucks games. The Middleton thing is, is the smallest problem because it's probably fixable as he gets back into shape. On the other hand, he is older. His body has been beaten up. He hasn't really been the same on both ends in two years. Um, and he's a slower wing, which, you know, it's, this leads to the second, second higher thing is that Griffin is put in, in this defense where guys are like scrambling around. And to me, this is a team that's going to, I think by March, probably playing a lot of zone to try to hide some stuff right now. They're like aggressively trying to in Toronto last night. I watched that whole game. That game was embarrassing. Toronto was had wide open threes. And they didn't make a lot of them. They actually could have scored 20 more points than they did. I think they got to like 130. Um, they were giving up layups, transition stuff. And Milwaukee just seems slow to me, which leads me to the first thing, which is, I, House, I don't know with, with the guys that they have. We flagged this before the season. The wings. You just remove Dame and you just give me all the other guards and forwards on that team that's not Giannis. And it's just a below average crew. Even if Middleton comes back and he's 100% healthy, he's the only above average guy in that entire thing other than Dame. Dame, we knew about the defense forever, right? Now we're really seeing it. And this team went from the Drew Holiday, one of the best plug and play guys in the league, as Doc said, plus just they, you know, that was the one thing their defense was pretty good unless it was Jimmy Butler leaving his body. And now I don't see the defense at all. And... I don't know what the middle ground is going to be for them, but I th- I actually think it's pretty alarming, and I would be alarmed if I was a Bucks fan. How are we going to get stops? The playoffs are about stops. Do you see them getting stops in May and in, in June? Well, well, who knows? I mean, this is precisely at the guts of the 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 challenge for the Bucks, right? They needed to, after that first round exit against Miami, show up this season and show out. They needed to demonstrate to themselves, to their fans, to the league, that that was an aberration. And instead, we have an absolute work in progress. Adrian Griffin seems to have installed a defense that would have made perfect sense with Drew Holiday on the team, except Drew Holiday's not on the team anymore. Right. And the Chris Middleton piece, when has Chris Middleton not been on minutes restriction? When was the last time Chris Middleton was not on a, on a minutes restriction? And, you know... 
I think your point about the zone defense, you said March, dude, it's, it's November. Like they need to do something kind of quick. Now they're middle of the road uh, by offensive rating. They're 29th in the league on by, by defensive rating. That's right. not feasible. That's not tenable. It's with shocking. a guy that's a defensive player of the year candidate in, 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 uh, and Giannis, so I, I think it really boils down to, from my humble perspective as an outsider with nothing invested, I think this Adrian Griffin thing is a real challenge. And him scaring off Stotts, Stotts picking up his ball and going home, Bad that's a concern right there, yeah. fellas. So you got a first-year coach who's trying to solve all this. You have a team that has completely changed its identity. You know, and I I was flagging this all summer. and heading into the season and then it's like you're a hater you're just mad the Celtics didn't get Dame I'm like I've watched Dame play defense the last few years he's not a good defensive player and just in general you looked at the collection of guys they had and I, I just night the as we talked at the top the league is so deep night after night you're going against Trey Young and DeJounte Murray then you're going against Anthony Edwards then you're going against Tyrese Maxey it never ends and if you can't guard the perimeter I don't care how good Giannis is so I Kyle, part of me is thinking, if I had to do the uh, the running diary prediction of what each month of Bucks headlines is going to look like if this goes badly, like right now we're in the zone of, oh man, it's just so much new. Dame got to figure out his team, you know, give this some time, right? And then if it's starting not to look better, then it goes into, hmm, this has been a little tougher than we thought. It's been a lot for Adrian Griffin to put in his new system. There'll be some new system talk, but no shots fired at Adrian Griffin yet. But then if we get to like mid-December Christmas range and it's still not better and they still look as slow and kind of disjointed as they have this first week or so, then it starts being like, hmm, maybe they miss Coach Bud more than we thought. And then after that, it becomes, hmm, trade deadline's coming up. What is this team missing? Now we have the whole trade deadline dialogue. And I just think there's going to be a lot of dialogue about the Bucks because there's going to be nights when Dame can hide it like he did an opening night where he just scored a bunch of points at the end of the game and they won. But fundamentally, defensively, they give up a ton of points night after night after night. The defensive rating after five games, to me, is not totally an accident because it backs up the eye test of how slow they look. They look slow. A team with the honest should not look slow. So that's what I see. So you still don't think it's an overreact or you 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 think it's too early to overreact? I I'm with you that I'll fast forward and be like my my mind is already jumping to the trade deadline. I was joking with you a couple of weeks ago about like I'm I've been on the trade machine a lot trying to get them another guy to guard the ball. Like it's that's they have to address that because if you remember like the, the earlier I'm just kind of working from that just we know that. Um that they're going to have to do that. If you you remember in the off season when people were just kind of looking at this on paper, they were just like, "Oh, in transition. Oh, in transit." I just heard people over and over again, "Oh, they're going to be killed." Can you imagine in transition? Transition. Well, the key to transition is that unless you have like a team like a like a Kings team that can just yeah. get it out even after a made basket and beat you down the floor, this team ain't that. Like you said, they're old. They are going to be a half court execution team, but but for them to be more than that, to capitalize on Giannis and the spacing, you got to be able to like turn people over and get stops. So for by them buying into the offensive thing, they plugged one big hole in the ship, and another one started gushing in that they're going to have to figure out how to. He's going to have to figure out how to balance those two things because transition has to be triggered by defense. I'm so, so glad there, you brought up the cer- yeah, I'm so glad yeah, you brought up the transition piece cuz you're either getting off turnovers or you're just running. Like the Celtics, and I don't know if this is going to last, it's definitely an early season thing and something they've worked on, but they're just taking off all the time. They want to play with real pace. They're trying to do it. This is what Sacramento does. This is when Golden State's going well, they have a nice mixture of this. There's teams that do it. Then there's other teams like the Lakers that don't want to play at a pace like that because they have LeBron and AD and they kind of pick their spots when they run. For Miami, like, who's running on this team other than Giannis? Dame's not really a fly up and down the court guy. Like, he's a pretty methodical player. So is Middleton. Um, None of their wings are really that athletic. So I just, to me, I don't see the identity. It's like with Philly, like, where they have this Maxi team, right? Where Maxi flies and they have a bunch of young wings now and there's this fun team to watch. But if Embiid's not going to run... You're not a transition team. So I don't know. It seems like a, I'm going to say work in progress house. I, I feel like we didn't make fun of 
the Bucks thing enough, like that this actually might go wrong, I think is in play now. And I well, don't think I, people felt that way two weeks ago. Yeah, I, I think it was fine to be patient and wait and see. We didn't know uh, what Adrian Griffin had up his sleeve and we didn't know there, there, there was too many unknowns, right? We Does don't he know. have sleeves? Do We don't know if <laughs> he has sleeves. He out. might not have any <laughs> sleeves. We've but seen you, a lot of bad first year coaches over the last few years. Like it's not a slam dunk like, oh, they have a new coach. Like the NBA is a really hard league to coach. House, you've had some iffy coaches over the last few years at Washington. Like, oh, yeah. they're hard to find. <laughs> we got one now, right now. We, right. We have multiple right now, actually, across <laughs> across teams. Yeah, so, but then the Miami side of this, so they don't get Dame. They start out one and four, and they barely won the one game. I'm not pouring dirt on them. I'm not even going to wonder, hmm. But I do think if there's a do-over to be had with all of this, and we're just like, what makes what's the most fun bet for the Eastern Conference for a competitive standpoint? It probably would have been Miami going to Miami getting Dame, Milwaukee keeping Drew Holiday, and then the Celtics not getting Drew Holiday. And it feels like these teams would be a lot closer. I what Drew is already what you can see with him and White together, like those guys are ridiculous. And I I don't think people I don't even think I fully realized how good it would look right away. That's why it's so hard to, with Milwaukee to be like, oh, you got to give them time. Like Boston has two new guys out of their top five. Boston lost four of their top seven, right? And and they've been able to get it going right away. So I don't know. They, they, are you worried about Miami at house too soon? Well, they are uh, 24th by offensive rating, 17th by defensive rating, 23rd uh, by net rating. And so, you know, you would expect their defense to be a little bit better. Their losses, they played two playoff teams and the Nets, I guess, are going to try and contend. You know, losing to the Celtics and losing to the T-Wolves at, at this two early tough stage. Games. And no yeah, Caleb Martin at, for the Celtic game. Like, right. And that was a good game. I'm not worried about them. I th- I did feel like they missed Max Struess, um, who used to just particularly kill the Celtics, but in general just wasn't scared and was a wing with size. And then you take Caleb Martin out. And all of a sudden now your wings with size are not sizable. I also think there's a wrinkle, and I don't think it's too soon to talk about this. Tatum's bigger and he's punishing smaller guys. And it, it's it's a subplot for this season. They, I think, especially as we get into the bigger games of the season or the playoff games in the playoff series, you're not going to be able to guard him with smaller guys with the weight he put on. And it, he's really worked on like drop step stuff, Putting his shoulder down into people. Have you noticed this, Kyle? Oh yeah. Are, are we talking Celtics now? Yeah, you, you, I'm just J- talking Tatum. JKM, you knew the over under on how long. No, we're, we're not talking take. Celtics. <laughs> uh, we're talking yeah. Miami. Yeah, I'm we talking are. about I'm bigger. We're talking the Celtics. I'm no, talking no, bigger no. Jason Tatum against Come Miami, on, Kyle. a team Go that ahead. seems no. smaller. Come on. No, I'm ready. I'm ready. No, I asked Me that too. because I'm ready because I I have noticed that. Uh, I was kind of. I'm I'm glad that you said that because I do think that this the Celtics in the way Drew helped them do that. I think in bringing in Drew, it just kind of tilted their their touches in, and kind of redistributed them a little bit. Jalen's actually, his touches are down, interestingly enough. But what, what I have noticed is that yet, and you and I, I think I've talked about this on different shows about different p- players, that you kind of evolved to that point where you start going back to the basket. I love that quote where Doc said that he said to Tibbs early in the game when LeBron went back to the basket. He was like, uh-oh. Like, I, I love right. that. Because What's this? Yeah, yeah, that was great. Uh, Because I think everybody was kind of thinking that. But, like, um, I think a big thing for Tatum is he's doing that. They're they're all kind of cumulatively getting off the ball faster. Their ISO possessions actually are down for the Celtics. But Tatum is able to do this just because they have one through five space. Like, they they can. And and a sneaky thing about this lineup is that they all can punish mismatches. And they're like the opening minutes of that Pacers game, they just kind of took turns. Like, if you have a skinny team that likes to run and kind of yeah. shoot the ball, a lot of times those guys are skinny. And this seems older. So it was just like Derek White took his turn. Drew Holiday took his turn. But I think he just, in general... This is a problem KD had in OKC, which, and you heard it, you've heard him say it was just like he was always playing against 1.5 defenders. And I, you know, and I'm not going to say that that's something Tatum can just like exclusively blame tr- trouble on, but it definitely helps him that they have just insane space 
whenever they're trying to run their stuff. Uh, it, and you just go across the league, the best teams have that. And, and the Celtics really, I think, have found something here for him that's going to help him just evolve, honestly, more runway. Well, it was notable against Miami. And that, that was where no Caleb Barton. I want to see a game where they have him back. Miami just seems small in that game, especially with Porzingis, who got into foul trouble. But he's just gigantic. Like, House was, House was telling us in the offseason, like, Porzingis, he's huge. He can shoot and you can't put a small guy on him because he'll punish the small guy. And that they're already kind of experimenting with this. Wait a second. You're going to guard so-and-so with that guy. You know, Miami had Lowry and Hero out there at the same time and with like a smaller wing guy. And then it's like, all right, this is pick your poison house. You called, you made some soft jokes about Tatum. Let's be honest. You, during the, during the playoffs last year, you, you called them soft a couple of times. It's something that happened. Well, he deserved it. And he, as the leader of a team that went on this disappearing act uh, yeah. uh, inexplicably a number of times, basically from the all-star break through the playoffs. And there was like, you know, if, if you're going to be the leader of the team, then you got to take the responsibility for the character of the team. And Al Horford's too old to instill his, his tough guy uh, yeah. kind of you know, quiet persona. But look, man, and I was all over uh, Tatum as potential MVP at the beginning of last year. I sang his praises coming off of that final series against Golden State and how he, he showed called him up soft a couple of times. Stronger. It, well, he did no one well, yeah, in the latter half. Well, maybe of the you're year. the reason he put on 12 pounds. We don't know. He put on well, 12 hey, pounds hey, of muscle. The it's a, the the combination of Kristaps and Drew Holiday is an absolute force multiplier. Like you can't measure. There's yeah. not a direct link where you say, "Oh, it, it's not one plus one equals two. It's it's one times fifteen equals 30. I mean, I can't do math, but you understand what I'm trying to oh, say here. Is it too soon to say Denver and Boston are levitating above everybody else right now? From what we've seen, I, and I would have Denver quickly. over Boston. Yeah, I can go quickly. The answer is no. They are in an entirely different class. We forecasted coming in. They're the only two teams, I think, above 50 wins that we, you, me, and Rosillo sitting and doing our win total forecast. We took the over with Denver. We took the over with Boston. I think we were unanimous. I think it was a six for six on the yeah. on those those picks because we could imagine what we're seeing with our own eyes now. I will say this. I've been so impressed by Denver. So absolutely like, you know, the, the open question around what does it mean with Bruce Brown's not not part of this team? And will these the the, the young replacement, you know, t talent um, that that Mr. Uh, Booth has, has brought to the table bear out? It bears out, bears out. I'm I'll raise my 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 left hand up. Yeah, it's it, it's, it's a good situation. There. Did you did you just go Doris Burke on us and call him Mr. Booth? <laughs> I was, I, I couldn't, remember, I was like, Calvin, Calvin, he played for the Wizards. I mean, you know, Calvin, why oh, the yeah, long face? He was, he was me. one of your many mediocre centers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think, you know, their big question that we had just talking about them before the year and we all went over on him, Kyle, was, all right, Bruce Brown's leaving. Like, do we trust these young guys? Do we trust Christian Brown to come in and take those minutes? Do we trust like two of these younger dudes that they have to maybe play and be impactful? And I think that's what's been the surprise. You know. Minnesota wax them, but I also think every every great team's going to have their one team that's just kind of a weird matchup for them. I'll be the next Denver Minnesota game is probably the most interesting game of the year from a standpoint of all right, let's see. Now you know they they tagged Denver. Denver didn't see it coming. They broke a beer bottle over their head. They didn't see it. But now we're outside the club. What what do you got? Let's go. And I want to see how Denver responds to that. But you think Denver and Boston levitating over everybody else right now? Yeah, I think so. And uh, you know, I think House is right that like maybe maybe we did overplay the like how heavily they were going to be leaning on the rookies. They haven't really leaned on them hardly at all, honestly. And we we leaned a little bit on the Bruce Brown thing. Bruce Brown became the like I know ball guy to kind of be like, oh, Bruce Brown screener. You know, it's like and those things are true. But it's like, you know, it's not like Bruce Brown went to the Pacers and instant, you know, instantly changed that team. He's a great player. Yeah. But I think I think that this is speaking to the power of Jokic, quite frankly, is that when you have 
a player like him, not only is he a floor raiser, but he literally affects the value of every individual player that you have. Suddenly, suddenly 50 cents ain't worth 50 cents. It's worth 75 cents with Jokic. Your dollar, your money goes further. So, and I, I think that the other thing that I think that people underrate about them now and in the past you know, they lost Jeff Green, but it's the fact that they've got these big mobile forwards, too, that can do yep. a number of things. And, you know, they, they have these lineups where Aaron Gordon can play five. Like Aaron Aaron Gordon, like in Denver, has just been a, a revelation, honestly. And, you know, KCP, they have continuity. I would love to see them play Boston in, in the finals just because I think their personnel would stress Boston in a way that could really yield some interesting things. So, uh, you know, I, I agree. I think those two teams have the playoff pedigree. Um, yeah, they're, they're above everybody else in my book. 